Hi guys and welcome to another video from Flying Raven Studios. In today's video we're going to have a look at how to build accessories for your tanks and your vehicles out of green stuff and a few different tools. So come back and we'll have a look how to do it after this. So the first thing that we need to do is mix up some green stuff and as you can see you want to get a real good consistency again with this. You want to mix the yellow and blue sections in this case 50-50 uh, and just keep moulding them together until you get rid of that kind of marble effect. You want a good clean green. So keep doing that until the, all of the marble has gone and then you've got a nice bit of green. Next thing I do is Put some water down on the section of the, the surface that I'm going to be using. The, you can use Vaseline, but I've just always used water. It just means that the green stuff won't stick to the places you don't want it to stick to. So you want to then use your fingers and uh, use the malleable green stuff and just keep kind of squishing it out and squishing it out until you get the right shape that you're looking for. Um, in this case, we're looking at making a kind of a mat or a, a blanket. Um, so we want that rectangular shape and then we can start rolling it up and once you've done that you've you've got the, the bare bones of the start of what we're looking for so once you've done that this is where you start then putting in a little bit more of that detail so what you do is you get one of your tools in this case i'm using slightly kind of blunt end tool to just start pushing down into the creases and as you can see got to put some water on the tool so make sure you've got some water on it because you don't want the green stuff sticking to the tools and then what you do is you're looking at putting a crease kind of about one quarter of the way in on both sides this is going to be where we'll be looking at putting the the straps across to make it look like it's all tied down and attached to whatever vehicle you're going to put it on just make sure as you can see as I'm, I'm kind of reworking the end of it you just need to be careful that you don't lose the the rolls at the end because that's kind of the important thing or else it'll just look at like a, a big blob of green stuff that you put on the back of your tank or vehicle and then what i'm doing is, is i'm just working some creases into where the straps are going to be again with material it doesn't just sit when you put straps on it you'll get um, little creases here and there um, so again it's trying to work that into it to make it look as real as possible so you just try, kind of take this process a little bit slow and just make sure that you get all the creases you want once you've done that we're then going to look at making the straps to go in those creases now this is a little bit of a fine uh, kind of finicky part what you want to do is again make sure you've got a lovely amount of water on your fingers so that the green stuff doesn't stick but you also need to ensure that you can get it nice and fine and thin so that when you come to to place it on that it fits perfectly with inside that groove. So as you can see, I'm just moving the original set apart around so that I can get it to the right angle that I'm looking at. And then all you do is literally just cut it to length. Now, obviously I've rolled this in between my fingers, so it's got more of a rounded edge and we don't want it to be too rounded. So now we need to start working on that. So as you can see, I'm flattening it down slightly to give it more of that kind of embedded feel into the actual uh, rolled material that we've got there. Again, this is just a process that you want to take Kind of in your own time don't rush it and you just build it build round it you just need to slowly flatten it down look at it work at it a bit more flatten it down a bit more and then make sure that the straps are also tucked in so as you can see in this bit i'm just tucking that strap in so it makes it look like it goes all the way around and it's not just a strap that's laid on so i'm just working it and working it and it's kind of one of those things that once you've got it to the point that you want, you then take your tank, in this case the, the turret from a, a lemon rust that I found, and start placing it where you want it. Now I wanted it wrapping around the back of the, the turret so that it was almost like that in sandy weathers or even in like snow or rain that they could kind of lean out of the, the turret and pull it over their heads so that when they are looking out of the, the top of the turret that they can stay dry or stay out of the sun or stay out of the wind whichever it is but again it's just trying to make it look more realistic again this is the whole purpose of this it adds character and feel to your tanks so whatever you're going for just have fun with it and, and keep adding bits so as you can see i'm just attaching it making sure that it's nicely firmly attached to the, the plastic turret 
then I'm just kind of embedding it into the turret. So making sure that the green stuff is still got its shape and still looks correct. So it's got its creases, it's got its folds, it's got those kind of recesses that when you come to paint it, it will look fantastic. Now we're going to look at moving on to doing some bags that we can, this one's going to be kind of like a, a medic bag maybe, or just a satchel that sits on the side that attaches. Um, and again, make sure you've got water in the right places and not in the wrong, because green stuff has a thing of sticking to the tools that you don't want it to. So just be gentle with it, push it down. Uh, in this case, I've just mixed up some green stuff and made a rough kind of cube shape to start with, to give it that kind of bag look. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll start just moulding it into the tank to make it look like it is fastened or attached on a maybe a hook or maybe just it's got its own way of being able to be strapped to it. So you keep working at this to get the shape that you're looking for. Um, and as I, I said, this is more of a kind of a Bergen shape than your roll mats or anything like that. So this is where you get that shape once you're happy with that. We're then going to look at the lid or the cover that goes over the top of the bag. So again, just get some more green stuff. Work it between your fingers so it's the shape that you're looking for. Now with this one, I was looking for more of kind of a triangle shape to start with. So I could tuck it at the top and then fold it round and then work at it from there. Because you only need the rough shape to start with. Once you've got that shape, you can then use the tools to perfect the look you're going for or the angle of the bag or the, the strap that you're working on, whichever it is, the tools are then what you, what you can use. So I just work at this for a little while to try and get that shape. But what you don't want to do is push down that top too much, because if you do, you're going to end up losing the definition between the, the top strap or the top section and the bag that you've got underneath. So just keep going at it. See if you can get that defined edge between the two. And once you're happy with it, then we then need to move on to looking at the bag's harness or catch that the top of the bag is strapped down with. So now you're happy with that, we now move on to placing the little, in this case, I placed a little button or a toggle or whatever you want to class it. So just got the smallest amount of green stuff, just got on the end of the tool, made sure the tool was slightly wet, but the other side of the green stuff was dry so that as soon as it touched the bag that we've already done, it would then stick. And there you go, it's stuck on. It helps to, again, make it look more real. And it's just those fine little details that really help. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to look at a kind of a side satchel for a, either for a, an officer or maybe to go on the side of a, a horse or just to have the supplies in. So again, you take the shape to start with. In this case, it's a kind of more of a, an oblong cube shape, uh, an oblong rectangle shape. And then we start working the cover that goes over the top of it. Now with satchels, obviously, you've got more of a an overall opposed to with the, the bag before which had more of a triangle this is again more of a rectangle shape that you then want to fold almost from the back all the way over to the front so again it's just working that making sure the definition between the, the first section of the bag and the, the top that goes over it is not lost and you just keep working that and making sure that you're getting the details and the, the definition between the two and once you're happy with it find somewhere where you want it on the tank in this case, I've placed it kind of almost to one side of the tank so it looks like all of the gear is being kept together. And then you just need to gently, gently attach it to the existing tank's uh, top. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to just push it on because if you do, you'll lose all that definition that you've just worked on. But if you do, it's not too much of a problem because you can go back to work a little bit more. Now, with this one, we're going to do the same as what we did last time with the little toggles or buttons. Um, and we're gonna work at getting two on this case because it's, it's like they're buttoned up on both sides. 
again, it's kind of the standard of a satchel. And, and that's a good point. If you are looking at doing bags or rolls or anything like that, just look at online, just search up some bags um, and copy them. There's, there's loads of photographs of military grade uh, bags and satchels and bergens that you can copy. Uh, and it's, it's a good, good way of getting some ideas. So I've now moved on to working the strap that's going to go and I didn't want it just to kind of look like just a hoop. So what I wanted, I wanted it just to kind of look like it's been laying there and it's kind of moved slightly since the, the person who placed it there has left it. So that you don't want it to look like this perfect kind of capital D shape. So just put some little bit of detail into it, a little bit of um, crease in it as well. And then just again, gently plop it down, gently push it down so that it sticks to whatever surface it is underneath. And in this case, the green stuff from the first part that we did. Once you're happy, have a look. And again, if you see anything, just work on it a bit more. So now we're going to move on to what would be classed as the roll mat. Now I did exactly the same process as I did for the first one, but just a slightly smaller one. So that's been rolled up and now we need to place it. But again, you don't want it just laying there. You want it to look like it's embedded in the right place. So I've lapped it over the existing one so that it starts building up the environment and the feel that this is a tank that its crew have literally had to carry everything with them that there isn't really enough space inside the tank so they just have to strap it to the outside wherever they possibly can so we're just working on putting the creases in again same as what we did with the the larger one but this is on a smaller so i've gone one third and then one third again but you just want to cut that in slowly just do it gently because you don't want to obviously cut all the way through but you want to make sure that it's got a decent dint to it so that you can then lay the other ones on top of it and then what I've done with this one is I wanted to make the edge of the roll mat define slightly more because when I placed it on, it's kind of lost that definition. So I'm just cutting it back in. Again, it's really easy with green stuff because it's so kind of pliable and malleable. You can you can just do that at any point. So once I did that, I then started working on the creases again to make it look like those straps were strapped in very, very tight. So you just kind of put some little flicks, some little V's as such um, in each side of where the strap is. And once you're done with that, you're good to kind of move on to the actual section of putting the straps on. Again, it's exactly the same process, but with this, because they're smaller, you just have to make it even finer than what you did on the large one. Because these are kind of like your small little straps opposed to the other ones, which would have probably been ratcheted on. These ones are just tied on, or tied tight around the, the roll mat. So just make sure that you're getting them pushed in, because what you don't want is them falling out at any point. So just push them in. And again, make sure it looks like it's wrapping all the way around, because you don't want it just sat there and you want to show that there is a that they are tight around the the roll mat or the, the bedding or whatever you want it to be called. Um, and then just keep tapping away, putting in little indents to make it look more like rope. And then put the last bit on. And again, do exactly the same. Just keep this is a very kind of repetitive once you've done it a few times. But once you've done it, it does look fantastic. And it does give that real feel of kind of that lived in experience and there you go so as you can see it's really not that hard to make some lovely accessories for your vehicles to give them that lease of life that lived in rugged feel and to give them a real story and realistically, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? To make our vehicles really pop when they're on the table or on the battlefield. So I hope this has helped. And if you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, hit that like button and ping the bell button. That means you can keep up to date with everything that we've got coming out. Until next time, have fun.